Our newest correspondent went to CPAC and interviewed people, and it is some of the scariest stuff that you will see. This is a series of interviews done by Malik Snaps. Okay, Malik Snaps, and you can find Malik Snaps at youtube.com slash at symbol M A L I K snaps, all one word, does a really, really good job. Now, remember, one of the questions we've been asking is, OK, we get that the speakers go to CPAC and they get paid. And OK, like I understand that. But who in their right mind would attend CPAC? Not like as a media person. Are there teachers? Are there accountants who say, hey, you know what? I live in wherever I live in Texas. I'm going to fly to D.C. and pay for a ticket to CPAC. What sorts of people are they? And what you are going to see in these videos is that we are beyond talking sense into people. These folks, I don't believe, are reachable. We start with a guy who says the real enemy is big pharma and tech. And then Malik gets him to say what this is really about. It's a globalist cabal or I should say globalist, right? Um, but he's not exactly sure who's in charge of it. I and mean, we need to realize that the enemy isn't the each other. It's the people, the, uh, the, the leaders of this world and uh, of our government. Who are those leaders? It's the big pharma, the big tech, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization. You're saying like all these organizations like all have the same people kind of controlling them? Not the same people controlling them, but they all have the globalist agenda ah. in, in mind. And I, I do think there is a, a globalist uh, cabal of leaders that there do it is. kind of cooperate and conspire together to ultimately uh, create a new world order. They talk about this stuff out loud. He's hitting all the bullet points, guys. Globalist cabal, World Economic Forum, WHO, Big Pharma, overlords, the entire thing, one world order. It's an open conspiracy. What is their agenda? Uh, the Great Reset, a one world <laughs> government with uh, total control and, and not where you don't have your sovereignty or you don't have rights and you don't have liberty and freedom. There you go. I mean, it's that simple. And one of the amazing things is the level of confidence that these people have in their claims. Now, as I've said before, when it comes to this entire globalist cabal thing, it is true that those who have a lot of money, corporations and rich people have disproportionately more control than the average person over their elected officials. Or we, we've talked about that. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's what makes this version even crazier, which is it's completely unnecessary to explain what's going on. You don't need to go to big pharma. You don't need to go to globalists. You don't need to go to the World Economic Forum, Great Reset. All we what's happening is actually in plain sight, which makes it even wilder that they go to this. Now, Malik did something interesting, which is he asked a lot of these folks, is Biden a communist or a socialist? And as you can imagine, it generated some some really interesting answers. Would you say Joe Biden is more socialistic or communist? Well, socialism turns into communism eventually, uh, but I think he wants it really does it. That's another one they repeat now. Be socialist, but sometimes he's a communist. So. Can you elaborate on how he has been a communist? Uh, well, a federal vaccine mandate that fired healthcare workers that <laughs> fought against the pandemic on the front lines. Um, and not yes, the fact that there was a period of time during which just federal workers, right? I mean, fundamentally, if we're talking about communism, aren't we talking about total control of industry, wherein Joe Biden would have forced everybody in every industry to get vaccinated? No, that's because it didn't happen. But this is communism. Caring what happened to them and now depleting our healthcare system to where they can't fight against uh, viruses and disease and what? mothers and fathers of school of school children. You know? Yeah, D Trump did that. Trump disbanded the pandemic response team and hindered the ability of our government to fight pandemics and disease. So so an interesting critique more applicable to Donald Trump than it is to Joe Biden. Then we move on to a fan of Mike Pillow. This guy um, is a he's angry and he's a fan of Mike Lindell. And he says, we've got to stop the mutilation. We've got to elect Trump. 
but they're going to try to use the machines to steal the elections. Where did he get that idea? We all know where he got that idea. Uh, it's got to stop now. They're, now they're going after our children and mutilating our children. They. To hell with that. They are going after our children. These people got to be stopped. And it's time for weak Christians and weak people of faith and weak people of any religion, weak conservatives, weak Republicans, to all start getting tough on these people. So, uh, you know, we've got we've to make sure he gets elected. Now they're going to try to steal the election from us again. Right. How do you think they'll try to do that? Remember, Trump tried to steal the election. Well, they'll do that mostly with the electronic machines. I was listening to Mike Lindell earlier. <laughs> Did you see him pause? It almost seemed like he was going to call him Mike Pillow. And he said, we need to take all the electronic voting machines in the country, melt them down and turn them into prison bars. And he's right. That's a great analogy, a great metaphor. Um, these people are stealing our elections in every country. They just stole the election in Brazil from Bolsonaro and put a criminal in there, a felon. That didn't happen. It was in a prison until recently. Uh, they're going to go after Oban in Hungary. He's another good man and a good leader. And Bukele in El Salvador has just perp walked 40,000 members of MS-13 and other gangs into a prison in their boxer shorts. Uh, he's not messing around. That'll help their economy <laughs> tremendously. It'll be this guy is out of his mind. And uh, Malik uh, follows his instincts here. And he says, can you explain to me what Joe Biden's biggest failures are? What are some of the things that you think the Biden administration has failed to do? Oh, God, open borders, uh, Afghanistan. Remember, open borders. Policy at the border has not dramatically changed from Trump into Biden was a disgrace and a humiliation for this country. The Afghanistan withdrawal was exactly what Trump would have done. Only now does Trump come up with what he would have done differently. For about six months, Trump was asked many times, what would you have done differently? He couldn't he couldn't express anything. And he gave and the Chinese. He's obviously in bed with the Chinese. He's he's on his knees in front of uh, in front of President Xi of China and he's not praying. There it is. That's some imagery on his knees in front of Xi, but he is not praying. He is doing something else. Same guy, by the way, before we move on, brings up the term subhumanoid, which was an interesting moment. In speaking to President Trump over the last couple of months, I've realized this guy is laser focused and locked on. He's ready to go for 2024. By the way, who this guy's been speaking to Trump? That's it. I don't even know who this guy is. He has to win this. It's, it's about the future of humanity. If we let these subhumanoids continue to control and destroy <laughs> our country, we're in real trouble. And, you know, then our only hope will be God almighty. He'll have to come down and smite these people like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Right now, by the way, as funny as the, he's talking about subhuman, not subhumanoid, it's not really funny. We laugh to avoid crying, but this is part of what the right does. They dehumanize, they dehumanize and they act as if and spread the idea that some of our fellow homo sapiens are not really human because of their political beliefs. Then we go to a guy who was wearing a brick suit. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, he was he was wearing the brick suit, I guess, to support the wall, which isn't actually made of bricks. He was asked what Biden did wrong. And the guy is very confused about the wall. This is my brick wall suit, and that's why they call me brick suit. And it's signifies my support for strong border barriers, specifically a border fence between the United States and Mexico. What is something that Joe Biden has done you don't really like? President Trump had built much of the wall that was requested and much more was ready to be built. <laughs> the materials were right there at the border. The contracts were already signed. The workers were already working on it. And when Biden came in on one of the first things he did in the you know, first few days is he stopped all construction. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean Americans stopped paying for it. We'd already bought all the materials. We were already paying all the contractors and we continued to pay them millions of dollars a day to do nothing and no more wall fencing was constructed. Now, most of that really isn't true. The reality is that Donald Trump had planned to spend about 16 billion on the wall. 10 billion was going to come from funds diverted from the Defense Department with questionable legality. And then just under six billion was going to come from a congressional appropriation. And then 600 million was going to be forfeitures collected by the Treasury Department. That's based on a 2021 Congressional Research Service report. When Biden did stop the construction of those pieces of wall, there were some steel panels and piping 
left at the construction sites. They're almost all being used elsewhere. The stuff didn't get thrown out. Some of it was donated to Texas for a state border wall, which is kind of the same thing that Trump was trying to do with it. So I don't even know why they're so upset. Some of it was used to close breaches in a Texas levy, which seems like a pretty damn good idea. And then, of course, much of this, like the guy says millions of dollars a day. I found no confirmation of that whatsoever. Same guy was asked, is Biden a communist or a socialist? And the guy says he's neither. He's a puppet. Well, who's the puppet master? The guy doesn't know. Would you say Joe Biden is a socialist or a communist? I would say he's a puppet. And I don't Ooh. think he has any particular uh, political ideology. I think he just does what people tell him to do. Which Who is people? he a puppet of? Hard to say. <laughs> Hard to say. I'm, there's suspicions there, but what are, what are those like top suspicions? People in the previous Democratic administration. Ah, so there's the idea. Obama. He thinks it's Obama who is controlling Biden. Uh, very, very interesting idea. Then we go to a young guy who was asked, is Biden a socialist or a communist? Would you say Joe Biden is more of a socialist or a communist? More of a socialist. What are some of those socialistic policies? Uh, I think in particular the environmental stuff. Yeah. Shutting down He's a socialist because of the environment. On the Keystone XL pipeline, killing all those jobs. But you know he wants to get rid of gasoline cars in, you know, by 2030 or 2035. Why? Uh, because he thinks that CO2 emissions, CO2 emissions are bad for the environment. Uh -huh. And he just wants to keep everybody dependent on the government all the time. Uh, and I think and of course, you do that by switching to electric vehicles. That's a problem. Yep. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, these are the people that go to CPAC. OK, another another young guy here. Also socialist or communist. You think Joe Biden is more like a socialistic or communist? Probably both. <laughs> That's the best policies. You tell me more about those policies. So, like, Marxism is a big part of communism, and Marxism pits one group against another group, mm -hmm. uh, and his policies do that. So there you go. You know, there's like an oppressed group and a non-oppressed group, and you pit them to pit people together. Isn't it obvious to you guys? Obviously, Joe Biden is a socialist, Marxist-inspired communist. Same guy and others asked when two men get married, what do you make of that? Quite a range of answers, I will admit. Can you finish the sentence? Two men getting married is unnatural. Two men getting married is you can do whatever you want. Uh, I'm a Christian. I don't necessarily agree with it. Two men getting married is legal in America. Two men getting married is not a big deal. Two men getting married is I'm not for that at all. I'm not, I'm not that liberal. Why? Because you cannot appropriate. Two men cannot appropriate. I'd rather have two sane gay men adopting as opposed to uh, crackhead parents. Two men wow. getting married is not marriage. Traditionally, marriage is between a man and a woman. Tradition. Uh, it's something else. It's not marriage. Do you think two gay men should have the same rights as a heterosexual couple? What do you mean by rights? Like just per uh, human rights. What are human rights? Two men getting married is that's a sin. I mean, you know, look, I have nothing against uh, homosexuals, but um, <laughs> you couldn't tell, guys, but he has nothing against gay people. You know, as long as I have a live and let live uh, uh, policy and philosophy, oh, like okay. if you want, I don't care who you want to sleep with. Just say out of my face about it. Once you get up in my grill and you're you're a homosexual and you want to start telling me how my kids are going to be uh, educated in school. And of course, gay people famously go and get up in people's grills and say, this is what you should do. That's where I draw the line. Then the gloves come off and we, we're not going to have a good time. There it is. A very, very powerful declaration. So we've answered our question. Who goes to CPAC? It's these people. I believe they are lost causes. Now, if you have a family member who's like this and for sort of like pseudo entertainment purposes, you want to see if you can talk sense into them by all means. But the idea that we are going to win elections by disabusing these folks of all of these ideas, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we win by voter turnout and by mobilizing those who are already thinking a little more clearly than these folks. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. We are fighting our way, fighting, fighting towards two million subscribers. And you can get us one closer by hitting the subscribe button. 
As many of my viewers and listeners, of course, know, I have many family members who work in the field of mental health. And I think one of the most important things that we can do is to both increase access and reduce stigma when it comes to mental health services. And that's why I am thrilled that one of our sponsors today is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it is 100 percent online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists, an important word, therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. You answer a few questions about your needs and your preferences, and BetterHelp will match you with a therapist that meets your needs. You can then talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. Could be text, could be chat, phone, video call. You can message your therapist anytime. You can schedule live sessions when it's convenient. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in office therapy, but it's on your schedule and it's at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Pacman. The link is down below. 